Hello everybody, this is Greg Sokowski coming to you from the White Bear Lifetime Fitness, also the home to the Little Canada Tennis Classic, where today the Summer Series champion from Weldell Reed will be facing off against the Little Canada champion. Hey, stay with us, you won't want to miss it. Good afternoon everyone, TSB Television welcomes you from Spooner Park in Little Canada as we present the Waddell and Reed Little Canada Cup. Today, a best of three match between Doug Batuska and Chad Flynn. Stick around, you won't want to miss this. Hello everyone, I'm Mike Peden here with Greg Silkowski. Greg, why don't you tell us a little bit about the players we'll see today? Well, Doug Matuska has a long history. The Little Canada Cup Classic has been around for about 15 years, and Doug has probably won three or four of those championships against some very, very good competition. On the other hand, we have the new Waddell and Reed Series, which is bringing some of the top players from around the metro area, and Chad's going to be coming in, and he's won a couple of series as well. So we've got two top local amateurs, we have a great setting, and we have a new championship series that's hopefully going to lead up to the Lian Chin Challenge, which is coming here in September at the Target Center. And what should we expect from these two players? You mentioned they have a lot of background, a lot of experience. Uh, how will that come to fruition? Well, you're going to see Chad's a very, very steady player, and he brings a very smart game where Doug has been known as a hard hitter. He's also a local pro at the same time. He's been around the St. Paul circuit for quite a while. Like I say, he's won numerous championships. Both these guys are well known in the Minneapolis St. Paul tennis community. Stick around, our match will start shortly, but first we're going to take you to one of our player profiles and then the first point. Mike Pete in here with Doug Matuska from St. Paul, Minnesota, as we present this best of three match coming up today here at Spooner Park in Little Canada. Doug, why don't you share your tennis experience? What got you started? Uh, when I was about 14 or 15, I picked up a racket um, and just went out and hit with a friend. And I had some interest um, in college. I went to a small university and I was able to uh, be exposed to an enthusiastic coach and he got me really hooked on the game. And that university is Hamlin University in St. Paul. Maybe you could share what was it about the coach you had that really sparked your interest in the sport? Well, he was, he was more about learning than actually winning, so he wanted us to all become um, better skilled and able to take those skills and teach them to other people as well. And very fitting in the sense you mentioned you're a teaching pro and so you help out younger athletes develop the sport of tennis and so why don't you explain your role in that? Well we help anyone from age 2 to, to 90 and uh, we have a variety of programming that we do but uh, at the core is just giving the players some skills to be able to go out and enjoy the game. And what has developed with the sport of tennis? Uh, it's getting bigger now. We, ESPN just took over the Wimbledon contract and you see a bigger audience and a, more interest than maybe 20, 30 years ago. Well, um, I think these things go up and down and um, we're lucky to have uh, Roger Federer and Rafael Nadal and now Djokovic in the mix and the women too. They're, it's wide open with the women so um, we have Wozniacki and the, the Williams sisters are still around. So uh, there are a lot of different things happening in the sport that you can, you, can, you can watch now. There's a lot more accessibility with that. And speaking of accessibility, what would you say has grown with Minnesota's talent here in the sport of tennis? Well, we're, we're a lot of... Um, a lot of our, our kids develop indoors, and we have a lot of indoor courts right here in the Twin Cities, um, so there's that availability. It's, it's a little harder up here because you can't just go out and play in the middle of the winter, and, but I think um, there's a lot more uh, programs out there now for kids in, in the wintertime, and in the summertime, you can just grab a racket and go out, and, and we have a lot of local courts like, like here at Spooner Park. And one recent example you could point out, Jessica Aney from Rochester Century, a seventh grader last year, made the state final in the Class 2A singles. And so we see players are starting young and doing well. Mm -hmm. And these players are athletes that are they're playing other sports as well. And um, I think tennis is attracting more of the athletes these days, uh, which is a really neat thing for our sport. And so what will you be hoping to showcase today? Obviously, I know you'd like to win this match, <laughs> but... Uh, other goals you have in mind? Um, I want to move my feet a lot. I want to work really hard. Um, I want to. I really want to concentrate as well as I can. I know Chad's going to get a lot of balls in play, so um, I'm just going to have to stay focused and do the best I can. Well, thank you for speaking with us, and good luck today. Thank you. And welcome back to Spooner Park in Little Canada. We see 
Matuska and Flynn warming up in this best of three. Matuska will be wearing the navy blue or royal blue polo, and Chad Flynn wearing the powder blue t-shirt. If we get a look at these two warming up, uh, what are we what are we going to see from these two today? Well, I think you're going to see traditional style tennis. Uh, uh, both are backline players. They play from the base. Um, I think also at the same time, steadiness is what these two guys, well, you know, they have a lot of experience, uh, good athleticism, and if nothing else, they understand the game. So even if one is stronger than the other, they will adjust. They will find a way to compete and make this a great match. And how did they get here, if you don't mind sharing? Well, Doug is a uh, four-time champion in the Little Canada Cup series. And uh, in the Waddell and Reed Summer Series, uh, Chad's won at least two or three uh, titles himself. So this is kind of a tournament of champions, so to speak. Both are well-known in the community. Both have won their share of tournaments. Both are exceptional USTA-ranked uh, players. So I'm looking for a good match. And so am I, and I think we'll be ready to start this momentarily. Again, we play the best of three. If you're new to tennis, we play up to six games. If the game is tied at 6-6, six, six, so we play a tiebreaker by points. And you have to win two games to win a set, and naturally you have to win by two points to win a game. So you have to break at least once. Now, I know there's this major event coming up on September 30th at the Target Center that features some living legends, if you don't mind sharing with that, that with us. Well, uh, the Lian Chin Challenge will be taking place September 30th here at the Target Center. And I think it's been one of the best uh, events that's happened in a long time locally for tennis enthusiasts. We're going to have Andre Agassi, Michael Chang, who, by the way, uh, actually grew up in Woodbury up to about age 12. Uh, uh, we have, uh, of course, uh, Courier, uh, whose uh, organization is putting this on. Um, and uh, Borg Borg is not going to be here, but he will be in the Chicago one. So they have some of the top pros of the past, and of course, who else but John McEnroe. You can't be serious, right? We are serious. <laughs> it appears, are we ready to start this? It appears so. They're down to the one ball. There we go. Flynn will serve to start this match. Again, best of three. Fault, and that means he'll serve again. Fifteen love as Matuska hits the net on the first point. You know, it's it's interesting. I think the camera is even effect on pretty seasoned players. I see a little jitters here already. Fifteen all. They're calling it five, five and fifteen, pretty much the same. Now it's 30-15 after Flynn nets it. But you really see some strength with the forehands from these two players in the opening game. Oh, absolutely. Uh, great topspin. Like I said, they're both baseline players. They're kind of feeling each, each other out right now, even though they played each other several times. Fault and he'll reserve. 30-15 in game one. Let. And for those of you new, a let means the ball hits the net, but still counts as a legal serve. Nice shot. That nods it up at 30 all, or 
I should say, 1540. Break point opportunity for Matuska. Like we said, in the sport of tennis, you need to get at least one break. This could be the, oppor could be the opportunity here. in his first game is, and I think younger players or even amateurs, is the amount of mix and just not banging the ball. They're using a little cut, 30, 40. slice, tops. Still a break point. That's our first game. Ball sails out and we were talking about you got to get that break and Matuska getting a break early in the first set. Now he will serve as the players change sides. As a sports analyst and uh, performance and player development, one thing I'm always talking to athletes about, sports is not about big plays. It's about minimizing mistakes because unforced and forced errors are going to dominate what happens out here, as you saw in the first game. And just like that, Flynn... His shot goes out of bounds, and now it's 15 love. <laughs> 30 love. I'll say this, Matuska jamming Flynn a bit. Flynn, his volleys sailing out. Look at Matuska changing things up a little bit, advancing to the front court. Oh, I've always really enjoyed Doug's game. Uh, some of the younger players are just, just hitters and bangers, and you've seen already in the second game a lot of mix. Three game points. And just like that, Matuska up two games to none, attacking the front court. And that aggressiveness is paying off so far. Well, what I think so far, I think Chad is uh, with the television and uh, it's feeling a little pressure. He's a little nerved right now where Doug is, is really taking, taking it to him. He's controlling the flow. And sports is control and momentum. And right now, Doug has control and momentum going for him. Matuska up two games to none. Flynn now serving. Love 15, and Chad going through a little bit of struggle right now. Well, and again, I think the jitters are with him with the television, and, and Doug is, is in his element. He's really playing in his own. Well, that time Flynn advances to the front court and nods it up at 15 all in this third game. Great serve, great serve. Um, we try to follow and come and attack. Again, um, Chad's still trying to find his game. And it's so important for an athlete to start fast, finish strong. And right now, Chad's still trying to find himself. Well, he found himself there, 30 all. Well, he's put a couple of good serves, first serves, first in the tee and uh, deep into that four, uh, backhand side. Just, Another break point for Matuska. Flynn went to his backhand and he almost had a volley, but 
Matuska just jammed him. Chance for Matuska to go up three games to none. That went out of bounds. Boy, I'll tell you, that was a golden opportunity for Chad. He made a great get. Uh, Doug comes back with another great get. And uh, right now, he is a steadier player. He is really playing his game, controlling the flow. Chad is, has made some good serves, has had some very nice shots. But he doesn't have the consistency or the rhythm that Matuska has right now. Hi, Greg Sokowski. I also have the honor to serve as the executive director to the Sports and Life Foundation, which also has sponsored Little Canada Tennis Classic for the past 15 years. We're very happy this year to be involved with the Lian Chin Tennis Challenge. In fact, the restaurant we're at today is right near our tennis courts. This is going to be one of the premier events that we've had in many years in the Twin Cities area for not only the casual fan or the fan of tennis, but the student of tennis as well. With us today is Charlita. She's one of the employees here at the um, Maplewood, Leanne Chin. And Charlita, tell us, you've seen a lot of folks coming in or looking at the poster. What's been some of the comments that you've heard thus far? Uh, I was surprised to hear that a lot of people was curious about the events and they said it would be a wonderful day to, to witness that events. And myself, I'm a fan of Agassi. So, how about the employees? Are they talking about going to the event? Yeah, I think they do. I think we're pretty much excited about that too, especially Lian Chin, of course. Right. Well, you know, Lian Chin was a very, very avid sports fan of Chinese ethnicity. And again, great food, great tennis, great workers. Hope to see you September 30th at the Lian Chin Tennis Challenge. The Lian Challenge series coming up here really aspires to not just growing the game, but seeing great competition and class sportsmen like we're seeing today. Oh, goes out of bounds. 15 love. It's up in all Matuska in this first set. Thanks, sir. And even Flynn acknowledging Matuska's serve Timing is everything in tennis. You misplayed even once, you can send that ball sailing out of bounds. Oh, absolutely. Miss uh, hits are more common even at the, at the pro level for that matter. And look at this, just like that, Matuska with a chance to go up four games to none. As he now has 40 love. I'll tell you, except for that last mid hit by Matuska, I am very impressed with Doug's game today. He um, is actually robbing some points away from Chad, and you can see the frustration on Chad's face. No. Fault, and I was going to say with Matuska, his defense is his offense. I, I think you said it right. His uh, defense has become his offense, and so has been the case here for the first four games. And as I mentioned earlier, sports is about not big plays, but minimizing mistakes. And right now, um, not only is Doug forcing the play, but uh, Chad has a higher number of forced and unforced errors. And that's what's kind of dug him a little bit of a hole. Even though he's made some nice plays, Doug is still taking the flow of the game. Wish we had a statistician to keep track of all those. <laughs> but we're here, and we've got a great match going on. And there's a friendly competition. You don't see any bad blood between the two. It's love 15. Love 30. I think what happens many times uh, when you see an uh, athlete like Matuska 
play such great defense. Sometimes you want to over hit or over try. And that was the case last time with Chad. He said, you know, he's just trying to pound it and try to force it by him. Ball just goes out of bounds. So another serve coming. Second. Double fault. Our first double fault of the match and another triple break point for Matuska. Well, I know I'm sounding redundant, but Chad is still trying Four to point. find his game and Doug is in his own. And sometimes it takes a little time. So just because one player wins that first set doesn't mean it's going to be a runaway. And Matuska with a chance to win this first set on the serve. As it's now five games to none in favor of Matuska. Well, th things can happen fast. There's no, there's no two ways about that. And that's why you see even at the tour level, it's important to establish early your game and get into a flow and get in the sink. Uh, Doug came out with very good pace, mixed it up. Uh, played well from the baseline. Uh, he did a little chipping and charging. Uh, he, he's really, really done a nice job. Chad, on the other hand, has had made some very nice serves. He's also has had some great shots, but they've been negated by the great defense that Matuska has had today. And what I've noticed so far is Matuska being able to attack on the front court a little more often and, again, that defense being his offense, saving points, and then when he gets there, he's at the front of the net, and he, keep, he keeps Flynn pinned in the baseline. Well, and again, when you have the lead and your game's going well, you play with confidence. And his confidence is allowing him to do more things right now. <laughs> I, got, I, I think Chad's got a smile and said, what do I got to do to win a point? And uh, <laughs> he, he won a well-deserved point. But uh, uh, as you said, Mike, his defense is his offense. It is love, uh, love 15, yes. Love 30. Very rare unforced error by Doug Matuska. just out of bounds. We do not have a line judge today, so no challenges like you might see in Wimbledon, but how about this? A triple break point for Flint. Look at the confidence that Chad just came out with. As I said earlier, when it was 5 nothing, Doug was playing with confidence. In that first point, uh, Chad worked extremely hard, got off with a good lead, and he forced the play and, and a couple of rare mistakes by uh, Matuska, and then finally a great winner. Well played point okay. by Chad. <sighs> Suddenly you're seeing a lot of confidence coming here, and Doug, Matuska making a few rare unforced errors. Five straight points now for Flynn. And perhaps the confidence he's been looking for. Look at this. Glenn <laughs> is really on a tear right now, and this is the confidence you said he's looking for. I know this is the way he wishes he could have started the, the match out, but if nothing else, he is building for down the road. He might be building now. He still has an opportunity to take this first set. One point at a time, of course. And 
that ends his streak of six straight points on a double fault, his second of the match. Yeah, it's unfortunate because he was playing so well, and you really don't want to give away a point at this stage when you're really controlling the play. The unforced errors, those double faults, those are the stats that will kill you. Sorry. Well, sometimes it's, uh, <laughs> it's good to be a little lucky. Those are the kind of breaks you sometimes need to keep you in, into the game, too. Two very class gentlemen and sportsmen and well-respected tennis players. Double game point for Flynn. Flynn originally from Lakeville, Minnesota. And another double fault. Struggling a little bit with the surface of late. Yeah, and that's really too bad because he was really on a tear. His game was coming around, and uh, not only did you give away a point with a double, with a double fault, but you kind of disrupt your own flow and your own rhythm. Still has game point though. little lob forces a deuce well he was in control of that uh, that game and now he's gonna have to work his way back sadly um, Chad, Chad Flynn has had a nice serve and for whatever reason his toss uh, he let it get away from him and instead of winning the second game in a row he's gonna have to work his way back in uh, to win this point yes. tell you that is an excellent I tell you those in the, <laughs> watching this match are really as well played as a point as you're going to see it's one of those points you wish would never end but look at this we go from two game points to a set point for Matuska well again I know I sound a little redundant but sports is about minimizing mistakes and error and it is the mistakes that Chad had that actually got dug himself a little hole here Tag calling for a commercial timeout. We don't grant those, at least not in between sets or in between points. Goes out and we're back to a deuce. Well, he's hanging in there. He's working hard. And um, what really impresses me with Flynn, he doesn't get unraveled. He was down a bunch of games. Uh, fought his way back in, kind of gave away a few points, but uh, you can see why he's won a lot of tournaments. Too good. Well, I'll tell you, he just, he laced that one. He just absolutely laced that one. And that brings the advantage back to Flynn and a game point opportunity. So we see a little back and forth action in this current game. Tell you, that is an excellent point. Um, well played, good strategy, good mix. Um, this is tennis you need to be proud of. I think the Little Canada Cup is very proud of Doug Matuska through the years as the Waddell and Reed series is very proud of Mr. Chad Flynn as well. And I'm sure Leanne, <laughs> Leanne Chell on September 30th says, hey, if we need a couple fill-ins for McEnroe or some of our older players, 
Maybe we can bring a couple of these guys aboard. Vantage Matuska and the way he has saved oh, yeah, points yeah, yeah. and stopped Flynn again, his defense becomes his offense. Oh, you, you hit it right there. I think the one difference, uh, they're both good athletes, well conditioned, but uh, Doug being a tennis pro has very disciplined and well-tuned mechanics. That is the one thing I noticed between the two players, uh, whether it be the double faults that uh, Flynn runs into the mechanics of Matuska are a little bit more refined and solid. And cross. Just, just, like, just like that, his cross and the first set is decided in favor of Doug Matuska from St. Paul, Minnesota. Six games to one. And as they take a seat on the bench, we'll throw, we'll throw it to our other player profile that we taped prior to the match. And we'll come back for the start of the second set. Mike Peden here with Chad Flynn from Lakeville as he gets ready to battle Doug in this best of three match here at Spooner Park. Chad, why don't you share your experience, what got you into tennis, and how has your interest in the sport evolved? Okay, um, I started when I was about 12 and just kind of, you know, played on the public courts and um, just kind of evolved from there and played high school tennis, um, played mostly doubles, and then went to uh, University of St. Thomas where um, I, I just needed to work on the education and not my tennis game. And I ended up uh, taking 19 years off of playing tennis and got back into it a couple years ago. And I love it more than I ever have. What do you think happened in those 19 years where now all of a sudden you enjoyed the sport far more than when you did playing in high school? Um, boy, it's a good question. Um, you know, I was playing other sports as well, and but now I've gotten to where we have a family, and if I'm going to have a little recreation, I need to kind of get a good workout, and golf wasn't doing that for me, and <laughs> tennis definitely is. Certainly a workout, it, even though points are played and they have pauses. There's a lot of athleticism in this sport when players are chasing balls, going after points, volleying, serving. There's a lot of movement. Exactly, exactly. And um, my background is also in running. So I did uh, 12 marathons, and hopefully that'll help me a little today against Doug. So you bring that multifaceted aspect that I was talking with Doug about, where you see a lot of younger players in high school who are doing really well also competing in other sports and so how does tennis help the all-around versatility that we see from athletes today I think just um, you know you'll see the quickness out there um, agility um, and just one thing that I think really helps a person in sports is kind of the mental aspect of it I mean a lot of times you're just out there by yourself and trying to win that point and win that match and so I, I really think just the mental aspect of the sport can can really help a, an athlete. What do you think has changed and grown about how Minnesota views tennis from maybe when you played in high school to now where we're getting state tournaments uh, webcasted, which hasn't happened before? Yeah, um, I think kind of like what Doug said before about just some of the great players that are out there, um, there's a really big interest in it. And from when I played, you know, it, Maybe people were interested during the, the four majors, and, and then it would go back down. And, and now, you know, I mean, there's a great tournament every weekend, and I think people are, people are interested. Speaking of interest, what are your interests? Obviously, you want to win this match today, but what else are you hoping to establish as you continue uh, returning to the game that you played back in high school? Yeah, um, just, I guess just to to stay in this match because Doug is such a great player um, and basically work on my serve and work on my forehand so if, if I can do that I think I'll do okay well good luck thanks for speaking with us and hopefully you'll come out on top thank you so much 
Hi, Greg Sokolsky, sports analyst and player development. When we work with the mental side or the inner game of tennis, people say, what's one of the toughest things that an athlete has to do? Well, it's staying in the present tense in the here and now. Therefore, whether you're playing tennis, golf, or any of your chosen sports, think about the here and now. Not the next point, the next game, but what am I gonna do on this particular play? Staying in the present tense. One of the toughest things of sports, but if you can do it, you'll be winning. We begin set number two. Matuska up six games to one, winning that first set. And it's Love 15. Matuska wearing the royal blue polo, Flynn wearing the sky blue t shirt. And Matuska winning that first set by attacking early and often, turning points from Flynn's direction into his own nice, sir. by playing at the front of the net. Well, I think a lot of younger players watching Matuska could really learn, being a student of the game, how it needs to be done. Oh, and again, there's another exact example of the amount of mix that Doug has in his game. He, when he needs a drop shot, when he needs to attack, when he needs to uh, cut the ball, when he needs to really drive it, very complete game. And now he has game points at 40-15. Like you said, those forehand volleys, that drop shot, little lobs, Duska mixing it up a bit and, and jamming moves, Flynn. And he moves an opponent around with a serve too. And sails out of bounds, 40-30, still game point for Matuska. And we play best of three, so Matuska could wrap this up oh, right now. Gorgeous. It's a gorgeous, even though the state fair is going on. It's still summer, and this is just a pristine day. I'm going on Monday. Oh, excellent cross court. Flynn really, um, really laced that one. And he forces a deuce. Flynn, slow to find his groove, to find his rhythm, but we see now he's in his zone, and I think we're gonna have an exciting second set. Ooh, Got him with the smash. He had a chance, he did have a chance, but uh, uh, Doug's a complete player. Advantage, Matuska from St. Paul attending college at Hamlin University. And the first game goes to Matuska in set number two. We should point this out with Flynn originally from Lakeville as they change sides. Right behind us, Flynn's wife, an anchor for the TPT show Almanac at the Capitol. And now he serves. That time, Flynn just mistimed his forehand and it hits the net. Again, uh, he didn't follow through with his shot. And the one difference between the two players are the very sound, fundamental swing mechanics that Matuska has. And that's a okay. case that even though Flynn is working hard, he, his mechanics are just not quite as sharp as Matuska's. Love 15.
And that time, Matuska hits net. You know, it's really interesting. These are both very class gentlemen and athletes. And many shots, they could have easily call an out, but they are focused on the ball and they play them in. I, I'm very impressed by both players. They're not trying to find the ball out. They're trying to play the ball in. Exactly. They're, well, again, we don't have any line judge, but even then, these two want to earn their points. Absolutely. And you'll even see your better players. Sometimes the ball will be three or four inches out, and they're so focused on the ball, they just keep playing it. Well, you can't improve your game if you don't play those balls. Even though they go out, it's another volley, another opportunity for you to practice that swing, forehand, backhand, drop shot, volley. Well, like I say, the better players, they are so focused on the ball, they're not thinking line or hoping for it to go out. And sometimes players, when you're hoping or looking for a call, you really are not playing your game. And speaking of Matuska, look at that. Jams Flynn again. Flynn was ready to make a front court charge. And Matuska with a great winner. Well, he put it right at his feet. He couldn't have put it in a better spot. Matuska is simply a very well seasoned, smart, competitive player. Double break point for Matuska. Matuska certainly not wasting his opportunities with break chances. Well, in that time, too, um, Flynn really needed to put that ball away. Uh, when a player is playing like Matuska, so consistent, even the slightest opportunities you need to cash in on and capitalize. That time, uh, I'm sure he wishes he had that, uh, that point back. Just when you think Matuska is figured out, he comes up with something new. That's what makes him such a versatile player as he starts this third game, 15 love. Well, as you notice, even on his second serve, uh, he rarely double faults, but he's not marshmallowing in there. Doug has a great slice second serve. He's consistent. He knows what has to happen. Oh. Right down the line, excellent shot by Flynn. And Matuska jammed a bit when the ball hit net, and that's one of those cases you just succumb to the element of luck. Well, they call it the greatest shot in tennis, hitting that net cord. And Matuska responds right away with, I thought was an ace. But it was fault. And that goes out of bounds. An unusual unforced error there. Well, he's only had a few. Uh, he's had a couple fours, maybe uh, three on fours this whole second set. Five thirty. Fifteen thirty. Oh my goodness! <laughs> Who needs bounces? Well, I tell you, it's just another well-played point. Uh, both played offensive, both played defensive, both were finding. I tell you, uh, hats off to both players. Double break point for Flynn. Ooh, Flynn had a chance. He pushed it a little bit there. He saw that opening. He was licking his chops. He just pushed it a little bit too much. Again, the difference so far has been the crisp mechanics and fundamentals that Matuska has. Still break point for Flynn, though, 30-40. Deuce, oh my. This is the wishes he had that shot back. Flynn's had a couple chances oh, to he's close he's out, and, yes, he and he just can't finish the deal. Well, he had that rhythm going in the first set where he had the seven, eight points in a row. And now he just is unable to finish. Uh, and that he knew it as soon as he responded oh, yes, with the forehand. He yes, he did. <laughs> And now we go from double break point to a chance for Matuska to go up three games to none in the second set. 
Mike, you said it best. Flynn has had his chances. And now we're back to Deuce. Like we say, Flynn's had his chances, but he isn't giving up, not getting flustered. And we mentioned these two class gentlemen, and so their mentality will not get the best of them today. Flynn did not have a chance. Well, and again, when you've seen the opportunities, uh, Flynn has had a couple that he missed, but in all honesty, Matuska has made every opportunity count for himself. That ball goes out, so that's game. And Matuska up three games to none in set number two as both change sides. Hi, Greg Sokolsky, sports analyst and performance coach. One question I hear so often, whether it be an Olympic athlete, professional, or even amateur is, how do I take my great practice game and have it happen in those tough pressure pack situations when it counts most? Well, that is the real essence of sports. Because there's a lot of great athletes in this world, and many of these athletes have great refined tennis skills. But the ones you're gonna see at the US Open are the ones who know how to play and make it count. Therefore, to become the best, you have to train like the best. Simulate situations. Enjoy those moments. In other words, what you do off the court will happen on the court. So, the most important part about making a situation work for you is simply enjoy the moment. As it was once said in the great movie Caddyshack, be the ball and you'll have great results. But don't count Flynn out though. Again, he's had his chances. If he can string some rhythm together, find a way to well, and get and those sure winners out we had his chances let and don't count Flynn out again we play the best of three so Flynn could come back and force a third set well, the ball went out a double fault or actually Okay, it was a light. You're right. This is why I'm not an official. Ah. Uh, another unforced error. Well, again, the coach and me will come back and say, um, I love the tenacity of Flynn. But uh, on a few occasions, it has been a breakdown in the mechanics that have caused some of these forced and unforced errors. Love 15. Love five. And you notice they don't play, they'll play balls that are out unless it's clearly out of bounds. Again. The class gentlemen, these two guys are. And, and they're very focused. They're very focused on the ball. They're not looking for the ball to be out. They're not watching the line. They are honing in on the ball. And all great players will do that. 15 all. And another thing, too, if you're playing for that ball, seeing if it'll go out of bounds or not, that can mess you up as well because then you're judging by the element of chance. Well, I know my work as a sports analyst. When we're working with the player development, uh, the mental, the inner game, okay. we are always talking about staying in the present tense, uh, really focusing on the ball. Nice shot, Doug. Focus on the ball. Uh, and if you set the extraneous thing like calls, uh, crowd, uh, enter your head, you will, you will get out of the zone pretty quick. 5.30. 15.30. Double break point for Matuska. Well, I know when Flynn watches this match over, he's going to see where maybe he didn't start out like he wanted, but he's going to look at so many balls that he he's going to be dreaming about those at night. I don't think he'll be dreaming about those balls as one comes right by us and wings by. I think he...
Four games to none. A little over anxious, a little anxious. Really wanting to put a little mustard on that. And, and unfortunately, uh, those mechanics, again, sports is everything starts with the feet. And it starts with those fundamentals. He wanted mustard and got ketchup. Warm ketchup. 15 love. I was going to say for Flynn, he's only returned to competitive tennis in the last couple of years. And so even if he doesn't pull out of this, it's just another stepping stone for him and playing competitive tennis again because he was out of it for 19 years. That's impressive. That shows somebody who just loves the game. Thirty love Flynn, a graduate of the University of St. Thomas. You know, it's ironic they both come out of the MIAC conference. Matuska Hamlin, Flynn, St. Thomas. Three straight nets and game point for Matuska, five points away from winning this match. When you think about it, there's many opportunities for athletes, not only at the high school USTA level, but with the Division Three schools, Division Two, they're in this area, of course, Gustavus Adolphus, uh, a nationally ranked power every year at the Division Three level out of St. Peter. If I had a nickel for every time Matuska saved a Flynn point, I'd be a millionaire. Well, don't count your pennies too soon yet. Well, it's not over. Tennis, baseball, those untimed sports always carry an element of unpredictability as our players change sides. Not only is it the weather so great, but the, the styles of plays. So many of our younger players could really take a lesson or two from both players not just a fundamentally sound game that we see with Matuska, but with the strategy and their ability to counter what happens on the court. And not just with their playing style, but again, being class gentlemen, players go out and give our camera people some <laughs> power aid. Well, the one thing that we, and I'll be going to the U.S. Open later this week, and um, we've said of all the sports in America right now is how impressive the pros are. They are truly professionals and how they handle the media, how they work with one another. Uh, the, very proud of tennis players. I know in my work in, in the performance side of things, we're always talking about what you do off the court predicates what happens on the court. So if you lack that emotional control at home, you'll, you'll lack it out here. Well, you see two gentlemen here that have um, good attention to detail, uh, you know, how they judge the calls, what these guys are doing off the court you're seeing happening on the court today. I know in the Lee and uh, Chin Challenge is coming up here at the Target Center on, on September 30th. Um, they're trying to grow the game. They're trying to bring uh, the game back to the community, make it more personal. That's why I'm, I'm glad to see John McEnroe. He's actually become like the spokesperson for tennis. Then you have um, you know, Michael Chang, who uh, hopefully the Asian community will embrace. And as I said earlier, he actually grew up in, in Woodbury. He spent part of his time in Woodbury. So they're bringing back some of the folks that have been icons to the game that hopefully can take tennis to its next level. And then McEnroe now considered one of the best broadcasters in the business. Oh, uh, he was never my favorite as a player, but I'll tell you, he is the voice of tennis. Uh, he understands the game. He knows what needs to take place. I know HBO just came out with a series and uh, talk about why are there not more Americans in the top 10 or what has happened to American tennis uh, outside of the, the Williams sisters and uh, he's an advocate about how we need to build a game both him and his uh, brother Patrick all right we still have an exciting second set in play Matuska leading five games to none and he has a chance to win match in this next game well even though he has a chance to close out without a doubt there have been some wonderful games and and points played I think when uh, 
Flynn looks back on this match. He, he, he's going to be thinking about these shots all night, how many opportunities, even though the score is, is 5-0, he could have kept it close and had many opportunities. The, the difference, as I say, has been Matuska's consistency. And when opportunity presents itself, and, and we tell this to all athletes when we're working on the their, on their competitive side, you have to seize the moment. And he has taken advantage of every opportunity where Flynn, unfortunately, has had some unforced and forced errors. Matuska will have to break in order to win this match, but he has broken almost every opportunity he's had. But nice. Flynn, right away. Again, we've talked about varying your speed. Just like a fastball pitcher, you got to come up with that changeup. There was a great kick serve that really caught Matuska off guard. Great serve. And like we said, all it takes is one sequence with these untimed sports and the momentum can change. Absolutely. Another double fault, that's number five. I, I sound like a broken record as a coach, but consistency. Here we have a great kick serve. Uh, you, you get that little momentum going, and then you give them a point right back. And you just can't give away points to a player of Matuska's caliber. Have you considered instructional videos? <laughs> Another front court attack, and this time Matuska jams himself. Well, we've talked about how many balls or plays that uh, Flynn wish he had over. Now there's one. Uh, uh, Flynn left it a little high, in fact, too high, and, and Doug knows that is one he really wishes he could have put away. And he's been doing that throughout the match. Oh, absolutely. 30-15. Another fine winner from Matuska. Well, he knew where he wanted to put that. He drove it down the line, drove it low. It was just an exceptional shot by Doug. There was nothing that Flynn was going to do on that one. 30 all. Big point here as Matuska, two away from winning the match. Flynn trying to keep himself alive. He wants to get rid of that goose egg, too. 30 all. If that's any consolation. He might have that chance. He has game point now. Again, I'm impressed how Doug changes the ball. He, he'd be a great pitcher because he doesn't have one pitch. He's got three or four pitchers. He he mixes it up, doesn't allow a player to get in too much rhythm. And that's another thing. When uh, Flynn was struggling early, Doug was not going to give him the kind of shots that allow him to get back in the game. Deuce. Well, I know even on, on the Pro Tour, I'm doing some work with the Chinese in a Lee Na camp. And uh, when the Lee Na's come against a Venus Williams, they say, well, gee, I beat her. Well, no, that, that's an easy match because they're both hard-hitting baseline players. It's like, uh, like two ball machines. Advantage back to Flynn. And that's the thing, matchups are so much, I don't care if it's football, tennis, the matchups. Uh, when you have two baseliners, I call it like two bazookas going after it, they said, gee, look how we're playing. Well, that's cause sometimes they're playing right in each other's hands. The right hitting speed, the right rhythm, the right, right flatness. Uh, well, again, what impresses me about Doug's game is he knows how to mix it up. Players struggling to find their game, it just makes it tougher because he's not going to give you those kind of shots yes, that sir. you can find your groove. And Flynn responds with an ace to give him the advantage again. No, he did win that game. So Flynn does remove the goose egg on the ace, but now he'll have to break Matuska to stay alive.
Well, ironically, even though Doug has really held serve well, Flynn has had numerous opportunities to break serve. And with the way Matuska attacks the net, you know, Flynn can get a few low shots in there, and get them past. You get a few winners going. And now look at this, love 30. Well, like you say, things can change on a dime. And um, tennis can be an ebbs and flows game. And, and you've seen Flynn really put a bunch of points together. Now there's a classic example where the ball was out but uh, Flynn played in instead of being up uh, uh, love 40. Uh, being a class gentleman he is, he actually gave a point away, but that's what, how you can really admire these two guys. As we mentioned earlier in the broadcast, they want to earn these points and not leave it up to judgment calls and guesstimations sure on ball placement. Replay, he's not gonna appreciate my um, <laughs> knowing that ball was out. Well, he has a chance for Break point anyway, 15-40. It's just an absolutely gorgeous day. These are just beautiful courts here, a little Canada. That was out, and Flynn with his first break of this set, and he goes from five games to none to five to two, and now things get a little more interesting. Hi, Greg Sokolsky here with the USTA, coming from the Lifetime Fitness in White Bear Lake, which is also one of the home sites for the Little Canada Tennis Classic. I'm here today with the 10 and Under program, the initiative to grow the game of tennis. And David is one of the pros here at White Bear that works with the kids. And David, come on, give us some of your perspectives of what's been going on with the program this year. You know, using uh, the transition balls has been a key element for the kids' success this year. Um, and using, be able, being able to have them see you know, shot after shot, longer rallies. It's going to really improve tennis. Thus far, visiting with the kids, the parents, you see the membership here. What are some of the immediate effects or enthusiasm that you've experienced so far? You know, kids are just having more fun. They're, they're able to watch what else is going on here, and they're, they're able to feel like they're a part of it. And, you know, Tom's been around for a while. He's seen all levels of play. He's watched the era of tennis grow. Tom, give us some of your thoughts. You've seen the game in the 70s at its height to where it is today. How do you see the 10 and under program fitting in? I think it's going to bring uh, tennis right back to the top uh, and exceed the, the 70s is what I think. Like six is the, the peak times of tennis. And it's because we have low compression balls. It's because these kids can actually have rallies that are serious rallies. And after they've been in a program for a while, they're starting to hit the ball like little pros. And they hit a lot of points back and forth, a lot of rallies back and forth. They're having fun. Well, the one thing too now, has there been increase in numbers, interest in the game, and enthusiasm? Have you seen thus far? We've seen that. We've seen a lot more kids coming out to play, and they're sticking around, and they're having a good time, and they're coming back. Great. Well, here we are again at the Lifetime Fitness and White Bear with the Little Canada Tennis Classic. And as Tom's going to ask the kids one last question. Hey, you guys, is tennis fun? Yeah! Ten and under, USTA. We're going to here to grow the game. Love 15, and even if Matuska ends up winning this, seeing some rhythm, some flow out of Flynn, I think is a good sign for him as he returns to competitive tennis, and just a sign, as you pointed out, that these okay. players are more competitive than the score would indicate right now. Well, you can see why Flynn has won several tournaments in the Waddell series. Okay. And you can see why the Little Canada Cup is very proud to have Doug represent them. He has won at least three or four um, well-earned open 30. titles over the last several years. Fault. Love 30. And a double fault. That's number six and match point for Matuska. Well, I know I was talking to both players, too, uh, on the changeover about the Lian Chin challenge and being oh, students of the game. I said, oh, absolutely, we're going to be there. And, uh, the Lian Chin challenge is something that every enthusiast, student of the game, fan, uh, really needs to be there. Support tennis so 
more tennis events can come to Minneapolis, St. Paul area. Uh, it's going to be great tennis. Some outstanding defense from Flynn, but his shot sailed wide, and that settles this match. Matuska wins 6 1, 6 2, but again, the score not indicative of the talent and competitiveness of the players. Right, and uh, again, that last point uh, kind of exemplifies what you just said. That it was an opportunity for Flynn to uh, cash in. Uh, Matuska hung in there, and next thing you know, when he has a chance to put away, he puts it away. As I was saying earlier, though, too, you know, um, you look at a match like this, you look at the local scene, what we have at the University of Minnesota, and then you see the Lian Chin Challenge coming up. Um, there are so many opportunities to enjoy this game, uh, learn from the game, and, and we're hoping uh, with the Lian Chin uh, series, that's going to be traveling around the country, bringing some of the greats back. I, I tell every one of my athletes and all the players. It isn't something you just need to do, just go as a fan, but as a student. You need to be there. There's so much you can learn. Even watching Doug Matuska today, a student of tennis who is um, young at the game, could really learn about his competitiveness, the way he mixes things up. So, you know, we're encouraging people not only to come out and play in a little Canada Cup, play in a Waddell Reed Series, not only get involved with the USTA, with Mike Goldhammer and his programs, but we hope to see them at the Lian Chin Challenge because that's what tennis is about the enjoyment, lifelong activity. Um, again, I, I love tennis, I love golf, but um, hey, we love being here today. Mike Peden here with Doug Matuska from St. Paul. He played his tennis collegiately at Hamlin University and now he teaches the younger athletes the fine skills of the sport. And so what are some ways kids can improve their sport and improve their play at the sport of tennis? Well, one thing that's really important is after the workout and after you've expended all your energy to take care of your body. And one simple tip that you can do at home or even um, on the court when you're done with your match or your practice is to simply take a ball and just rub the bottom of your foot. And this will help keep your foot loose and it'll help prevent fasciitis, plantar fasciitis, and it, it's a, just a good way to, to keep your mind on the fact that it is a very physical sport and we do need to take care of our bodies after the match or after the practice. So this is a great way to cool down afterward too. Not to mention the sport of tennis, you use your feet a lot, you're moving, you're juking, you're trying to jam your opponent, and so you can really bang up your body if you don't take care of it. For sure, and foot injuries are very common, especially from overuse, so it's a good way to uh, keep everything loose. Now, while the match is going on, one of the things you master, at least today, is attacking the net and using your defense to turn into offense. So how can younger players attack the net and catch their opponent off guard? Well, I think it's really important for the younger player to be aware of the balance of the opponent. So during the point, you have to understand that you have to observe if your opponent's a little bit off balance. And when they're off balance, that's a great time to come forward because they won't be striking the ball as firmly as they normally would. Find tips from a pro and thank you and go, to, go out there and teach those younger kids how to play. Will do. Thank you. To recap, Doug Matuska winning 6-1, 6-2 over Chad Flynn, but a very fine match and great match for all of you to see, study, and hopefully this will be a great setup for this Lian Chin Challenge on September 30th. Right. Well, we're also going to be having the Asian Cup where we bring some of our top Asian kids together, uh, both at the adult and the amateur level. Uh, the Southeast Asian community has embraced uh, tennis, as you know. Uh, in fact, the Somalian community, even in Minneapolis, Minneapolis South has brand new courts. Uh, Mike Goldhammer worked with the USTA to get those there, and, and the numbers are growing in that particular community as well. But what I love about tennis is the fact that um, you know it's very inexpensive, it's very accessible, it's very lifelong. You look at how many folks that you see at the seniors level playing tennis right now, how many courts are being built. It's a great lifelong endeavor. So it's no longer the country club uh, sport that you used to see in the 60s and 70s. Yeah, tennis is truly for everyone. We'll see 
the evolution throughout the years, but that doesn't from here in Little Canada. For everyone here at TSB Television, I'm Mike Beaton. Thank you for watching.